We didn't get the van until the day of uh, our first show, our tour kickoff show here in Denver. Um, Wow. (laughs) Roll up to Oscars. He has the trailer and the van, and they're not connecting. (sighs) We we say, screw it. We're going to go play this show. Uh, We have to be in Nebraska tomorrow. We'll figure it out. After the show, we go back to our drummer's house and try to get all of the gear into the van with all of us, too. So, oh it, yeah, that was that was definitely an interesting time. We made it work. We just had to sleep in our seats every night. So that was, <laughs> oh man, that See, was that's dedication, uh, though. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this that's is what, what it's all it about. takes. This is what it takes. People don't realize the this side of it, you know. Yeah, it's not glamorous at all. Um, but it was it was still fun. Yeah, it was it was super worth it. Um, I told the guys, you know, if we had to do this all over again the same way, I would definitely do it. Hands down. But we're going to try not to next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to an episode of Inner Sleeve, the podcast taking a behind the scenes look at all things music. I'm Cassius Morris. Joe Pacheco joining me on the line as always. What's going on, Joe? As always, I'm always here, bro. <laughs> we're always here. Like I say, we just sleep in our chair and we wait for the next episode. We're, we're woken. We're awoken from our slumbers. <laughs> <laughs> I look pretty good for just waking up, though. Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> Very exciting episode today. We got a bunch of news stories, but first, just a heads up: our guest on the podcast, we have two members of Under Auburn Skies, located over in Colorado. Tremendous group, and they're very tight knit. You know, the, the fascinating part about this group is they all have very specific working roles. Uh, they're very methodical in their techniques. So we're going to jump in. But first, a couple of stories from the world of music. Tomorrow marks a huge release for the rock and metal community with the first feature length Randy Rhodes documentary, Reflections of a Guitar Icon. It features a ton of never before seen footage and interviews with the likes of Dweezil Zappa, Ozzy Osbourne, George Lynch, Bruce Kulick of Kiss, and many, many more. I know you're a Andy Rhodes head, and uh, I'm definitely a huge fan of his myself. What was your first reaction when hearing about this doc? Put it on the list so we can talk about it on the show. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first ben. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, when I saw it, I was like, oh, finally, you know, like Randy, like I've always, you see, I think when I really was really young, I think he had just passed already. So I, I've never really known Randy to be alive, you know, and but I've always, his music has always been alive. And I really, in high school, 15, 16, 17, Mr. Crowley, all that stuff is learning all those solos, you know, and like he was a fire man like it's just like no yeah. one ever you know i don't think i mean there was van halen obviously right and there was many other guitar players george lynch as you mentioned before another favorite of mine but i mean randy yeah you know i mean like you know when you hear crazy train you hear some of those leads some of those souls especially the live album for me i really Insane. like i mean i love the albums for sure i always finally got like gypped in terms of the album quality is not as good as maybe some mm. of the other albums from other bands at the time i don't know why i mean it just sounds very thin you know like always very Whatever, but it has the, its unique sound, right? But like the live album just takes his tone, his feel, and that guitar solo where he does Suicide Solution, he breaks into a guitar solo Oof. on his own. I tried forever to learn everything on that solo. And it was like the first time of hearing, like, you know, somebody just really just play, you know, whereas yeah. like he, the it's heart. usually written for the song and he plays for the song, which I appreciate. But I mean, this was just like, hearing randy let loose for the first time and it was like wow definitely an eye opener i've been a fan ever since i mean you know there's not much like that's why i'm glad excited about this documentaries because like it says never before seen footage but we haven't seen much to be honest like i mean i haven't very little there's like a couple tv show appearances right and some behind the scenes little in but this will be like the the total of all of the archive gonna be insane yeah, I'm like, I'm not expecting like the Beatles get back a type of for no, the amount yeah. of stuff, but I mean, like, it, it's just as good for someone like me who's just been waiting to see, maybe even just hear. I don't even know if I've ever heard him talk. You know, like, have you ever heard him seen footage? Where I he think talks? maybe once, but like he said, like two words. Uh, yeah, he, the guy barely ever spoke, but I mean, with such a huge musical sound and tone, I hate to sound cliche, but he really l- let the music do the talking. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, what's cool is, you know, as another, like, you know, when I got into, I remember Quiet Ride having uh, come on Feel the Noise at that time and, like, a big hit at the time, but not with Randy because he had already left to go uh, with Ozzy. But it's going to be interesting to see, like, you know, a lot of those those people I grew up with, you know, back in the heyday, you know. So I'm hoping we got a lot of cool footage and uh, 
of like the, the what the club scene was like or a jam scenarios or maybe yeah. in studio. I really hope in studio. I'd love to see him in studio. Now, speaking of Randy Rhodes, it has been a tough week for the Osborne family. Of course, Ozzy Osborne and Sharon Osborne. Now, it all started with Ozzy's diagnosis of COVID-19, and it now looks like their entire household, that's the quote from Sharon, including herself, has COVID, which is obviously horrible. And, and you know, Joe, I think before we jump in, it obviously somebody here at Sam Mojo, uh, we wish them well and a speedy recovery. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, like, you know, I mean, Ozzy's already getting up there in those years, you know, so like this is where you sort of maybe are afraid, like, oh, you know, hopefully he's in decent enough help to make it through. But I guess so, you know, like, I mean, I mean, they have a big enough house. I'm pretty sure they can isolate pretty easily. <laughs> if you think <laughs> The isolation it. won't be hard. And I mean, it, <laughs> that's it. It was a worry about Ozzy, though, though, because, I mean, he, he is in a compromised immune state. You know, but yeah. it's I, I saw a lot of comments, too, saying, you know, oh, Ozzy's got COVID. I feel bad for COVID, you know, because this dude is like in, <laughs> impenetrable. <laughs> you know, he's legendary. I think he's going to be cool and he's going to kick ass. Uh, still incredible that he still wants to go back out on tour. I mean, I, the, how old is the guy? Six or something? I mean, I have no idea, to be honest. But I mean, yeah, man. Like, I mean, like, you know, if, they ha you know, drugs ha and alcohol haven't taken them down. COVID hasn't taken them down. I think he's still good for a neck uh, injury, an ATV crash, Parkinson's. I mean, this guy's lived through it all. So, I mean, it's uh, it's no joke. So, God bless Ozzy Osbourne. Documentary says, and uh, we wish definitely the best for his family. Hopefully, Sharon and uh, and the kids get better soon. Moving on to a bit of more positive news when it comes to health in the world of music. Inner Sleeve alumni Chris Holmes, of course, known from our second episode of the podcast or one of the earliest shows is getting close to remission in his cancer and is actually making a lot of progress. Now, Joe, I, I guess go into the backstory with Chris, because I don't believe we talked about his cancer battle, but what's the sort of gist of this story and, and where's Chris at now? Well, to be honest, like I see it on Instagram when I'm sharing and uh, I'm so honored that he likes our posts sometimes when I post on Sound Mojo and I see Chris Holmes liked your thing, you know, and so I know cool. what he's been going through. I, I haven't really followed. I've just been seeing you know, regular little updates on, okay, it's week three, week four. And it's so sad like to see what people have to go through. I mean, yeah. it definitely makes me, you know, sort of uh, count my blessings kind of thing, you know? And, but I mean, this is good news in the sense that he went through his final treatment, seems to be doing well, has some issues with throat and uh, I think some food, like uh, he has a special machine now that pumps the food for him. So he's able to keep his intake while he's on the road. Cause he wants to go out again, of course, or at least just, be more mobile right right um so anyways we just wanted to wish uh chris like you know the best man i hope he you know hope i'd love to have him back on the show if he'd if he'd come back you know when he feels a lot better 100 percent. and you know mm -hmm. i think the positive silver lining of this story is that you know we're in the age of medicine at this point and things have advanced at least enough that not every cancer diagnosis is a death sentence you know we, mm -hmm. we see this we just saw Dave Mustaine, who talked about recovering from his cancer. You know, so it's it's really good to see these guys getting back and recovering. And anybody else out there who may be suffering, yeah. our, our thoughts with you, 100%. Seriously. Snapchat has interesting new partnership with Live Nation, bringing AR to music festivals. Now, if you don't know what AR is, I don't blame like this is a new term, <laughs> and this is actually stands for augmented reality. Now, as yeah. you can see on the screen, certain different features locating your friends through snap map at the actual festival seeing how far they are uh, visuals that sort of go with the concert experience based on the artists you're seeing and there, there was a bunch of other stuff right yeah it's really cool like i mean you know i've been you know since we had like the smart first editions of the smartphones i always played around with any ar apps and stuff and it's kind of cool you know when you see you're going into a store and you're like or you're in an area and you'll see like, oh, hey, these are specials here or, you know, this store carries this kind of stuff. But for concerts, it's really cool. I like the idea of, you know, I mean, I like the idea of like being able to spot your friends or someone you know that or that you're friends with on Snapchat right away, like in terms of locating them. That's brilliant because you're always looking at a concert for your friends. Where are you sitting? You know, where are you standing? Right. So that's 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 a fun feature. It might be scary if people stalk you or you don't want you know people to know where you are all, that's all why times. i never have my snap map on I, I i personally never understood that because it literally can show the exact address like of your home yeah. like the exact street so it's like i i never got that part but for something like this it may yeah. add incentive to add it yeah this yeah. is really cool and like you know if we can see from the video here uh some pretty interesting like um the back here you know like we'll see that how they use it 
So that's cool, you know, because it can Very be cool. part of the artist set, you know, some of the artist design can be thrown in, maybe characters from their music videos, you never know, you know, it gives people a lot of leeway to create stuff, you know, or try different things, you know. Now, the main thing I was thinking with this was who the heck would go to a concert? And then I was like, sort of, it was like a burn. I realized so many people now, they, they watch their phone. They watch their concerts through their phone the, anyway, Joe. Same here. Like when I saw it, I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, once or twice during the show, maybe you'll, you know, you'll get to see some cool stuff on your phone. But then I'm like, you know, what's the point? You know, who the hell wants to watch a show? But then I thought of it too. Everybody already does anyway. They're always taping <laughs> this stuff, you know? So, I mean. It could be cool, you know. Like I, I definitely would like to at least experience it once and see what it's like. Yeah. I mean, have you have you ever seen gotten to see Coldplay? Never personally, but I'd like to. How about yeah, you? Yeah, I remember I went to a concert way back already ten years ago. Can't believe it, twenty twelve, where it was like uh, everybody had these cool little wristbands, you know. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the show, they would just light up. Oh, cool. The whole cool. place. Yeah, you know, it would just light up, and like you know, and they were playing in the rounds, so like you saw the whole place just light up, and wow. then the colors can change, it can c control that kind of stuff. I was surprised that I haven't seen that since. You know, like right. more more shows. You know, well then again, I haven't really been to more. I would say mainstream shows. Let's say Katy right. Perry, where they will put more effort into those type of things. And I bet uh, it costs a lot too. Yeah, especially if you're giving away these things, right? Like, but yeah. I mean, it's pretty trippy, man. It makes for uh, immersive experience like going back to the whole the the snapchat thing i mean i wouldn't want to bring my vr controller but i mean that's yeah. where it would be really cool right whereas like if you're watching a show and then like wow you're in surround and and stuff but i mean now we're mixing two different things together but i wouldn't put it past people though i mean the way things are going you never know what what i mean maybe if they make a smaller version that's like a google glass maybe that could be cool Maybe, yeah. Or maybe just like a, a purposeful event, like where it's like a bunch of people with VRs. It would be funny to see people just like this all the time, you know, probably walking around with the goggles. Each other. <laughs> yeah. I wonder you know, if it'd it be would like work. It would be a different kind of like mosh pit where people would just be hitting yeah. each other, but like not on purpose. Unintentional you know? mosh pit. Yeah, that's it. Now we're going to catch up with a couple of the guys from Under Auburn Skies. This was an awesome conversation. Huge shout out to all the up and coming artists in Colorado. These guys are located in Denver. And like we said off the top, just a really interesting group is cool. Their, their content is always on point and definitely make sure to check them out on all of their platforms, which are in the description below, wherever you're tuned in, whether it's video or audio, and also make sure to subscribe as well. If you enjoyed the intro and if you're about to enjoy this interview, which I'm sure you will subscribe on all of our platforms, whether it's Apple, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, we are everywhere you can get your podcast. So without further ado, let's jump in. And we'll catch you guys right afterwards. We're back with some more tremendous guests right here on Inner Sleeve. It's a pleasure to be joined by Oscar and Addison of Under Auburn Skies. What's going on, guys? You know, just out here, chilling, killing, trying to enjoy my day off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Appreciate you guys calling in. And you guys are tuned in with us from Denver. Is that correct, Colorado? Yes, sir. Thanks for having us. Pleasure. Yeah, totally. I'm curious about the sort of Denver and maybe just the Colorado metal scene in general. Um, you know, what's that like post pandemic Are shows there right now? What's, it, what's the landscape sort of like? Oh yeah. Our scene is blowing up. It's a uh, it, it, huge, uh, it always kind of has been, especially for metal, but, uh, noticing post pandemic, since we just got off this tour, we've noticed that a lot of, uh, other local scenes definitely aren't back up to, uh, our level for sure. Um, I mean, we have local shows probably every day of the week wow yeah, yeah. Part. that's insane so i mean it must be super energizing in terms of you know getting back out there again because because i know it was a long haul with you know pausing when you guys were you guys had a lot of those shutdowns happened yeah mm -hmm. um it's definitely been entertaining to say the least just because like now that like it's for us it's basically back to full force like now it's we're having more issues with conflicting dates of like trying to plan a show while other people are like, well, we have this show in this month on this week. And then this other band has this show on this week. So it's kind of cool seeing that it's like basically back to like 
where it was since before the pandemic, which is really cool. Um, but yeah. Yeah, same thing here. I think everybody's experiencing now a, like a, a, a deluge of just like all the bands are coming into town, you know, uh, even just myself locally here. I uh, just saw like Opeth and Mastodon like last week. Uh, Deftones is coming, Gojira is coming. So it's like, uh, you know, excite excitement is back in the air, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. But last night was Knock Loose and uh, Movements. That tour just came through, which is sick. That was completely sold out from what I know. So, nice. you know, this scene is strong here. <laughs> Good. That's incredible. You know, I, I'm curious about one thing with you guys. And, and I mean, this is a question that we, we usually don't ask because it's definitely like the most cliche question. Uh, but since you guys actually have a really cool, unique band name, what's the inspiration behind Under Auburn Skies exactly? Is, is this a, a Colorado thing? Is this something where you I mean, what's this based on? Yo, so so no lie. OK, so we found out. OK, so when, when, when the name came came about, it was just all it's like mad living it out like we're just throwing out names out in the open after like our first band practice right so like we're like all right we, we're official we have a song ready to go like i guess we should figure out the name and we just throw out a bunch of names and our old guitar player jeremy uh had the name auburn from he got the name auburn from like a license plate and then like everything else kind of just like came through it from there but like we just kind of mixed smashed and you know put the words together and we came up with that but up until recently, Addison uh, was so kind to point out that it turns out Auburn isn't a real color. It's just a hair color. But uh, Really? A hair color? That. <laughs> now they fooled us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're really good at what we do, apparently. Pay attention. <laughs> When you guys are coming up with names and titles for songs and albums, I mean, is it usually just spitballing and, and seeing what fits or is it like ever like you, you walk by a poster or an advertisement and it, it triggers something in your head? Um, for between the two EPs we've released, there's definitely different, um, a different mindset. Like for the first EP, we, like a lot of the names were like, aside from one, all of them were kind of based off of like what the song was about kind of thing. Uh, the only one that like, didn't have uh, uh, an exact title to the song was uh, an angel seeking chaos. It just sounded really, really cool. And that was like a demo holder for like when I was in my other project and that was like the placeholder name and we just ended up keeping it. And then for this EP, I want to say like Addison wrote the titles of the songs before the lyrics were put, were put in place. Yeah. When I was writing most of the music, I, I kind of just came up with uh, demo names for each of the songs, and for the most part, they stuck. So, <laughs> yeah, that's everything people do, though, right? I mean, and then, you know, the pieces that come together. You know, that's the, the mm -hmm. process. Yeah, I like to think that I I put some kind of emotion into our songs when I'm writing, so it it's good to put words to that to just kind of give it a basis to go off of. Mm. And do you guys like share songwriting duties or is it like you bring it into the jam room and then you guys work stuff out? Uh, for the last EP, I definitely uh, started demoing songs and, and try to get them as cohesive as possible and then give them to the other guys, uh, mainly Oscar, um, to just get uh, feedback and songwriting kind of back and forth uh, on that. And then... Uh, uh, Joe handles all the vocals. Uh, I'm terrible with words and lyrics. So uh, Joe does all that. Um, and then once we get a solid track of like programmed drums and the guitar parts pretty much fleshed out, we uh, we give it to our drummer and he does his magic all over it. So killer. <laughs> I mean, Addison, when you're writing, do you like to use voice memos? Do you like pen and paper notes? I mean, what do you like to, to use? Because I'm always curious about that. I generally just sit down in front of my computer and record into my DAW, um, just, just demo. Uh, I have a, a hard time with uh, piecing things together if they're not in front of me. Okay. You know, like every now and again, I'll just be hanging out with a guitar in my hand and I'll come up with a riff and I'll be like, oh, yeah, that'll be a cool part to the song. And then I I try to remember it as best as I can. But uh, that often escapes me. Joe and knows so, about this. I oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still tell myself like, OK, no, I'm going to remember it this time. Right. A millionth time later. 
No. Exactly. Yeah, the guys get super frustrated with me because they're like, "Oh, that one riff you had, it was super cool." Do that. Again. I'm like, <laughs> what happened uh, to it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. And I mean, you guys have a whole bunch of stuff, sort of spreading your wings, you know, artistically as well. Of course, you guys have uh, the live music video. Uh, watch. Uh, sorry, it's called "Afraid," featuring Ronnie Canzaro or Kenny Zaro. Am I saying that right? Kenny Zaro, yeah. Kanzaro, mm -hmm. cool. So, I mean, maybe talk to us about that process and, of course, uh, the collaboration with him. So that song was the first song that I brought into the band when I joined, uh, well, yeah, almost three years ago. Well, yeah. Um, and it was actually the first metal song that I completely wrote ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I had been working on it for a, probably a few years at that point. And that was the song that I showed the guys. And they're like, okay, you should probably join the band. <laughs> yeah, so like the yeah. backstory to that was very funny because like he was, it was before he was in the band, and he was showing it to like my or the guitar player Jeremy at the time, and they were kind of working on it, and then they stopped working on it, and then I, and then it was brought to me, and I was like, yeah, dude, I'll help work on it, and then you know a series of events happened, and he ended up joining the band anyways. I'm like, well, fuck it, well, but you know that song's already like halfway done, if not more, than, <laughs> like like just finish it like that was that was one of the starting points and then we kind of just you know shot wrist back and forth after that but for the most part addison did a good chunk of uh that whole song by himself and then like i helped reshape it like i heard the original solo that he when an old friend had from him i think it was like pre-recorded and it gave me the idea for this solo so i just kind of did that and then like threw in my harmonies because i'm i love harmonies more than anything mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is that a complicated process? Exactly was the reason that it maybe didn't surface at first. And then sort of to add to that, what's the reason that you guys thought of this again for this collab? So as far as the collab, I think it was just more so like trying to reach out and see like if we can get a big name to like kind of like help give us um, some some shape and some new form to what we do. And like you know, trying to find someone like in metalcore that we like, not just like listen to, but respect and like kind of aspire to be kind of thing. Like, it, yeah, it we're all big of, fans uh, of, uh, we're all big fans of Born of, of Osiris. Yeah. So he, he was definitely the first name to come up and just happened to work out. Yeah. That, that nice. email conversation was cool because I originally reached out to Ronnie's uh, manager, EJ, and basically the way he put it is like, all right, cool. Like, I'll reach out to Ronnie. If he likes it, you'll hear it back. If you don't, hear anything back he doesn't like it we're not going to fuck <laughs> okay well we'll find out how that goes and not even a full 24 hours later he's like all right cool he likes it he wants to work on that like, dude so sick so fun nice. is he known for like uh, doing collaborations or you guys just took a shot in the dark that was literally a shot in the dark like shooting my shot trying to figure out if it would happen what's the possibility and yeah it, it kind of worked out and this was like before that whole new like there's what i think it's called featured x or whatever and now like you can purchase for like uh, you know, people to be featured in your music and stuff, and which is cool. Like, it, I just, uh, it was before that happened. So I just like ended up shooting a lot of emails. Like I literally shot my shot for, for like big names, like him and Anthony from Ash at the Burial, trying to see if we can get him, but uh, we're, we're, we're not that cool, but we still got Ronnie. So like, I would know we're yeah. pretty cool. So it's okay. You guys are pretty damn cool. If you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And his, his, his part turned out a little bit different than, what we had in place there before so once we got that back we kind of reshaped the song again to yeah. match his vocals um and it, it ended up working out pretty good is there always like there's always uh, i know when i share songs with let's like a, a vocalist or someone there's always that like fear of like when it comes back and you're going to play it for the first time and like what if you don't like it you know like was there any of that we didn't not like it it was just different than what we had um okay and, and we liked it so much that we decided to keep it and and mm -hmm. change the song to it. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, it ended up uh, turning out to be a, a really fun song to play live. Um, definitely one of our favorites for the set. Um, we open the set with it every show. So, yeah. And Oscar, you mentioned, uh, you know, sort of new uh, services for, for artists and how they, they quickly pop up and can really change the game. Have yeah. you guys as a band found any of these services in the last couple of years that have been really helpful to you guys, you know, developing artistically? 
God no. <laughs> and it's <sucks, laughs> hopefully one day. <laughs> like no, like it, it's cool. Like it's cool seeing it out now. But like for me, it was like a slap in the face after work. I was like, you know how many emails I sent? This is <laughs> yeah, all that work. Dude. Yeah, and now it's like a lot easier, a lot more expensive too. But like you know, it was easy. And like it's a lot easier now. But at that time frame, now like it was just I I just send a lot of emails, and I know. <laughs> So right now my girlfriend isn't a fan of it because I'm on my phone quite often. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's entertaining, but like, like I have this mindset like the moment I get all these emails done or like sent or like I have like a a list of things I need to like try to take care of, I'll like immediately have this mindset of like as, as long as I start it, I will hopefully eventually tell myself to finish or like keep up with what's going on and I'll get there. But uh, being in the like being in the band and like trying to run it as a business and like you know take care of every aspect that comes around to it is a pain in the ass so like if i could find ways to make it easier i will but like it has not worked out in my favor i'll tell you that yeah i, I do not envy oscar's role in the band at all. <laughs> none of us are nearly capable enough to, to handle that so yeah plus you know <clears throat> we, you have to do like 17 different social medias and like yeah. all that stuff like so i guess that's oscar because <laughs> i guess that yeah. falls on you too Thank, I mean, I found out like there's some apps where you can schedule some post things, so that's yeah. cool. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do this now while like I'm pooping, so that way I don't <laughs> have to take away time from like my school or my girlfriend or like video game time. I'm like, no, dude, I need, I need my time. I can't, I can't do this. You're driving time. with a laptop on your lap, well, no, no, hopefully not. But <laughs> yeah, at that point, I'm like a cop. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I gotta make sure I'm going to sit. Yeah, like traffic's cool, but like hopes. <laughs> Where do you guys weigh in on on the whole NFT space of music? Speaking of you know the whole news, maybe Web three. So we I, are. Or, yeah, go ahead. We are definitely not uh, the most technologically adept band, and po- probably not up to date on most of that. Um, we've considered putting out a single as an NFT but then just the entire process and what we'd actually gain from it we didn't really see much value in mm. right yeah well because like anything else right like it's new it's everybody's getting in on it and right what you do it feels like a drop in the ocean you know like when you when you're doing it exactly but uh, you know and then it's like like anything else you got to have build that audience that actually wants some of that stuff right so exactly. maybe that's what it is yeah. yeah, one day when we're doing when we're doing bigger shows and, and, and tours and everything and actually have a bigger fan base outside of Denver, you know, maybe that'll come around for sure. Sure. Well, not only that, but I mean, I, I just think people in general struggle to still understand what an NFT even is. You know, I think mm. people understand it than those who do. So, you know, that fan base will you know continue to grow itself in, in the space as well. Um, so, I mean, in terms of touring, you guys have toured. A lot of different groups. I mean, from arsonists, uh, get all the girls to the facelifts, uh, like moths to flames. What for you guys was maybe the most thrilling tour uh, or most exciting sort of tour leg that you've been on in in recent history? So as far as that goes, I mean, like a lot of that was just like jumping in on our state show. Like when they come on tour, they're playing Denver. We shoot our shot to jump in, and it's always great when we do. Like that's awesome. Um, as far as like our like actual touring, we just went on our first one with Smile in the Center, and that was stressful and fun and <laughs> exciting all around. Uh, like regarding the music video, that was like day one. That was at, at Denver at the Oriental Theater, and the turnout was great. And like the video came out super sick, but behind the scenes, it was like a shit show. It was super stressful. Ordered a van asking for a trailer hitch like oh yeah it comes with one don't worry it comes with like a small little hitch to like tow like little boats didn't have a trailer hitch already had the trailer and so we had to like get a rig the whole thing to make it work to like we're already fucking doing this tour like there's no way stepping back now so like well we didn't get the van until the day of uh our first show our tour kickoff show here in denver um wow (laughs) roll up to oscars he has the trailer and the van and they're not connecting. So we we say screw it. We're gonna go play this show. Uh, we have to be in Nebraska tomorrow. We'll figure it out after the show. We go back to our drummer's house and try to get all of the gear into the van w- with all of us too. <laughs> so oh it, yeah, that was that was definitely an interesting time. We made it work. We just had to sleep 
in our seats every night. So that was, oh man, that See, was that's dedication, though. Up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is what it takes. About. This is what it takes. People don't realize the uh, this side of it, you know. Yeah, it's not glamorous at all. Um, but it was it was still fun. Yeah, it was it was super worth it. Um, I told the guys, you know, if we had to do this all over again the same way, I would definitely do it. Okay, hands down. But we're gonna try not to next time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully not. But we, we, you know, if if the situation arises, uh, you know, that that's insane though to think about that. I mean, do you think that it helps you grow a thicker skin as a band? Because I mean, you know, I don't think there's really many great bands that don't have stories like. Yeah, we we did a lot of bonding, and it most of it was over the hardships more than anything, um, right. because we all learned how to handle it in our own way, but also handle it as a group and and deal with things as they came. Um, I can tell you that I was pretty stressed out before this tour, just trying to organize all of the gear and everything. That's kind of my role. Um, and everybody really stepped up once they saw that things weren't happening exactly how I wanted them to. And we just made it work. That's cool. It's interesting that you guys like have dedicated roles besides, you know, guitar player, singer, lyricist or whatever, but you have dedicated roles outside of that. Like, so you're like touring and like, what are your, your roles? Um, so mine is just mainly focus on our gear for the live show. Our, we have a main central rack that has all of our like guitar processors and wireless units and stuff like that, making sure that that's, everything's connected. Uh, the in-ears are working. Um, everybody's getting signal. It, you know, things like that are working. I, I run a, a snake to front of house, make sure that they have all of our inputs and outputs. Um, and then Oscar stepped up to handle all of the batteries for the wireless units and getting guitars on and off the stage, um, which saves a bunch of times. Our bassist, Travis, um, was in charge of lights. We, uh, we brought our own lights for the last tour and wow. yeah, that was, that was a whole thing that I, I didn't even finish programming <laughs> the lights until two days yeah. before we left. So wow. <laughs> it's hard. It, yeah, it ended up working out really, uh, really cool. Um, but Travis stepped up, started taking care of all the lights, making sure that those were going to go every night. Um, our drummer and our vocalist mainly focused on getting drums set up and taken off stage, uh, every night. So it's cool. Cause I saw the performance video, the playthrough and your drummer doesn't have the crazy 16 toms and the, the whole, yeah, like, thank you know, like, yeah. Cause I'm like, he has a nice simple <laughs> four, a five, six piece kit, you know? And, uh, and it looks like, you know, uh, so when you mentioned that, I'm thinking, okay, cause usually drummers, I know I've been waiting side stage for the drummer to finish <laughs> putting his, <laughs> his, his kit together. And it's like, everybody's waiting, you know? Yeah. That's he has interesting. A, a four piece kit makes it super easy to get on and off every day. Um, the, the main things are, uh, really his his trigger system which was also new for this tour um making sure that that's all set up correctly um, we're also running a kind of a trash mic from his kit into our in-ears so we don't have to worry about front of house micing the kit and sending that to us um yeah so all all of that just really became a cohesive process getting him I have to admit, like, uh, you know, from my experience being in metal way back and like, uh, and then I got into studio and all that stuff. So I don't play mm. as much or at all anymore, but it's interesting how you guys, cause I've seen another band that we've had on the show, Fane, they also do metal core like you guys. And I know mm. them personally. So I seen the setup like you guys in Iraq with the in-ears, uh, the, the ax effects, everything is there, you know? So it's, mm. it's interesting how more, much more, I think bands have to be a lot smarter and a lot more organized and and like you know the, the gear is cheaper yeah exactly the gear is cheaper thank god for that but you still need right. a lot of it you know yeah like, no we we dropped probably too much to pay, 10 grand <laughs> yeah 10, 10 grand in, in yeah. gear um and that's, that's cheap it. compared to just like yeah. 20 years ago you know yeah. well and the cool thing about like all the modelers and everything like that is we don't have to worry about tube replacements and carrying around the big heavy amp heads and everything like that uh most of the shows we run direct the front of house too so we don't even have to worry about live cabs that's yeah awesome. it makes it it makes it easier at the end of the day um but it is quite a process to to get it all together <laughs> 
Yeah, well, because, you know, you don't have to carry amp heads and stuff. So it's less yeah. stuff in your truck and less stuff. You know, if the club's on the third floor, my God, I've been there, you know, and you got to yeah. carry everything up. Oh. Yeah. I mean, the rack isn't the, the lightest thing in the world, mm. but two guys carrying it around, it's no big deal. That's when you bring it down the stairs, that's a shit show. Screw <laughs> Downstairs. Yeah, that's a whole nother one. <laughs> we have a new segment that we're trying to kick off here. And this is going to be like an album versus battle. So we wanted to bring these two options to you guys your opinion on it and today's albums are going to be by metallica and, yep this is a tough one we had to pull out all the stops <laughs> this is going to be ride the lightning versus the black album oh ride the lightning for sure yeah ride the not no so tough, hesitation huh? not so tough me too yeah black album's cool it, it definitely had their biggest singles on it um and and move them to that whole new world of stadium sellouts kind of thing and, and that that's great but as far as pure technicality and and songwriting ride the lightning definitely the only downfall to ride the lightning is that it's too short that, that's like literally yeah. it that's yeah. true it goes by just just like in a flash yeah. right pardon the pun but yeah uh, i mean like most of the songs on it just quick and quick and heavy you know yeah, yeah. Or something like that. I, 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 I was introduced to Metallica at a young age, but like when Master Puppets came out, and that just changed my life. Like, literally, I was into this music, and then no, that doesn't exist. It's Metallica, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because, you know, the first four albums are like my favorite, but like, I, I keep going back to Ride the Lightning. There's just something special about that album that almost gets like lost because of Injustice and because of, uh, you know, the Black albums, but there's something special about that album. I mean, look, the Black album is great. It's probably their best, one of the best sounding albums, right? It changed a lot mm -hmm. of stuff there. Like for me, Sad But True is still just a killer riff. Yeah. It's all but, so heavy what, too. Yeah. When I came, yeah, when it came out, that was incredible. Yeah, exactly. When I came out, I was so like, I loved the album as a kid, you know, and it was great. But I find going back to it, let's say 20 years later or 30 years later, I'm not much, as much of a fan of, as I was back then. But Sad But True still like is a great, you know, like riff and stuff. But like, yeah. anyway. well, so, yeah, everybody, the best. everybody still knows Enter Sandman and, oh, you know, yeah. right. It, it, like I said, it was the biggest commercial success for them for sure. But yeah. the other albums, especially Injustice, Master of Puppets, like the big, big almost operatic kind of albums for yeah. them, right? And then no doubt. I, I feel like Ride the Lightning was their last pure, almost just straight thrash album before they started getting yeah. into the more it's uh, true because the Justice, almost progressive side. Yeah, that's it. And Justice yeah. is more progressive. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. So would you guys say that Metallica is the is the most iconic thrash band or are they not oh, quite yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah, hands down, dude. Like, I, I don't think I, I wouldn't say there isn't an argument there, but like, it's hard to argue. Like, without Metallica, including Dave Mustaine, dude, throw throw in Red Lightning, yep. throw in like kill, kill them all. Like, yeah, with Dave Mustaine, without Dave Mustaine, we have Cliff Burton as a phenomenal bassist, dude. Like, hearing just anesthesia pulling teeth in itself, one take, Oof. wonderful, great. As far as thrash goes, and you go hard with like Creeping Death and like even the Master of Puppets, like. Damage Inc., dude. Like it goes hard. It, it just, never it ends. Hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just play from Kill 'Em All all the way to Just for All. Like it's so hard to like. I don't know. Fight that argument in general. Like from that point in that era in that period before you know the Black Album, nineteen ninety one shit. That whole time period leading up to that is just pure, mm. pure thrash, pure wonderful in your face metal. It's great, uh, and it, it you know they have a few albums that people didn't really receive well like load reload uh saint anger the, yeah you know all of those albums but other than that especially compared to the other big four bands they have the most diverse and well-known catalog for sure yeah yeah. yeah, it's very hard to fight that. It's just like, you know, debating that, you know, Sabbath are the godfathers of metal. It's like at a certain mm. point, there's not much of a debate. Right. <laughs> Actually, kind of just that. the facts. Um, <laughs> obviously, here at Watch Mojo, we're well known for our top 10 lists, and we pulled a top 10 list as well for you guys to react to. So this one's interesting, and I'm curious what you're going to say. Uh, this is the top 10 metal albums for people who don't like metal. Oh. And uh, so so what we can do is is we can have you guess what the top three would be. But if you don't have any guesses, just give us a random one of what you personally think. Damn. Okay. 
That's mm. a little, a little hard. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say Black Album is definitely right. up there. I could definitely or, say yeah, just for the simple fact that it's not too heavy, but it definitely has those leanings. Um, maybe the debut Black Sabbath album. Okay. For sure. Um, and then after that, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to throw in a newer one, uh, for me for top three. Uh, it would be, uh, I let it in and it took everything, uh, by Loath. Okay. So that's a newer one. Yeah. Oscar, how about you? I mean, definitely want to throw in the black album. That one makes sense. Okay. But like, as far as like reaching to a new audience that doesn't know metal that might like metal as much as I'm not, like I'm not a big fan of the band, but like, I would say any tool album, basically. Okay. I feel like that would make sense. The one I'd like to see realistically would probably be like Cowboys from hell by Pantera. I think mm-hmm. that's a great introduction album or like even, um, yeah, because vulgar might be a little bit hard for some yeah. people. Right, yeah. Yeah. Cowboys from hell, yeah. It was mine, though, that and that definitely threw me in. I kind of want to say, like, man, I want to say, like, Sacrament from Lamb of God. I'd like to see that. Oh. There's some diversity there. I mean, it's harsh and metal, obviously, but, like, there's still some calm places where you can be like, I can understand what Rand's saying. I can get why people like the double bass and, like, these heavy tom fills and yeah. the guitar riffage. I'd like to see that, but you know, that that'd be my like route to go. Okay. I love it. Well, here is the uh reveal the top three. Number three was the number of the beast by Iron Maiden. Oh, okay, yeah. Which that's I one, guess makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that's one of your top ones, right, Joe? I know that much. Number yeah. two is one of my top records, Paranoid by Black Sabbath. So we were close with okay. the first one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, honorable mentions include uh, Peace Cells, of course, uh, Once by Nightwish, but number one, Black Album. And I think that that's yeah. super hard to avoid. I mean, there's nobody who doesn't at least know Ender <clears throat> Sandman, you know? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's funny because some of the other ones on this list, The Hunter from Mastodon, which is like a, I find a sleeper Ooh, album. Really? I, I don't know if you guys are into anime or anything, but like I, I, I associate that album with the Death Note as I was reading the manga and I was listening to that album over mm. and over and over so i associate that with that but like city of evil by uh avenge sevenfold it's not bad right like oh i love that album that album's pure yeah. cool so it's a killer that album great. that makes sense they're like new age metallica so it's cool <laughs> yeah right. and like number 10 which makes sense is a mesmerized by system of a down that's kind there of you like yeah. you yes. can get some people into it you know like so it's it's interesting and another one of my personal favorites is uh that's actually here as an honorable mention is uh, images and words dream theater that's what like okay. that's the album that saved me from when grunge came in not well not that i hate i liked grunge but i'm saying when like hair metal was out and all that stuff and then when i heard dream theater it was like whoa here's another <laughs> avenue to go down point, another realm grunge if you're not the biggest fan because yeah, yeah. I, I mean allison chains is still killer but yeah oh absolutely um yeah. dream theater is an introductory band that's that's an interesting take for sure yeah. So if you want math homework while you listen to while you listen to <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I love that. Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, is there anything else that you want to add, like that we can expect from the group or or anything that you guys want to promote? Uh, we're currently writing our next album. Nice. Uh, hopefully, planning on hitting the road again here soon, sometime this year. Uh, other than that, yeah, we uh, we have two EPs out. If you want to check those out they're on youtube spotify apple music amazon um just put out a new live music video for afraid um yeah yeah we'll have all the links in the description like usual you know, awesome. all that stuff it's cool yeah. Yeah. thanks so much guys thank you very thank much you. for having us I want to give a huge shout out to the guys from Under Auburn Skies for joining us today on Sound Mojo. It was a pleasure chatting with them. Like we mentioned off the just very methodical with their entire plan, I think. They have very specific, dedicated 
skills. They're interested in more than just one aspect of, of it. You know, it's one thing to play, but they're interested in learning about the behind the scenes of mastering production, even if they're not doing it themselves hands on. So, I mean, yeah. it's a really interesting group, if you ask me. Yeah, and it's like I made the point during the interview, like where I noticed another metalcore band, Fane, which is like uh, known to Sam Mojo uh, um, audience. Shout out like, Fane. Yeah, Fane, man. And uh, anyway, so they're like, yeah, them too. I remember they have their rack. Everything is in ears. They're ready to go for touring. And like, you know, the mix is there. Their guitar amps. Well, technically, they're the modelers now, you know, Axe Effects. You know, it's all portable. And like, but it's, you know, it's like I said, it's not cheap. You know, yeah, but it's a 100%. lot cheaper than it used to be even just 10 years ago, right? But like, yeah, it, so you see that these guys, they understand, like, get to the show, simplest route to get on stage. Even look at the yep. drummer, had a five piece. That's unheard yeah. of for like a metalcore kind of or metal drummer, right? You have to have- Which I like too, because I mean, it, yeah. it diversifies the sound a little bit. Yeah, that's it, you know? And another thing I liked is like when they were talking about um, uh, Kenny Zero, like uh, having him featured on the song- uh, they mentioned other websites for features, right? And after all that work of sending probably 100 emails, you know, and they like, find oh, it. <laughs> I, I could have just paid to get it done, kind of thing. But this is what just want to show the work ethic of a band, you know, like it doesn't just stop when the songs are finished, written. You got to record them, no. perform them. Then you also got to do all the social media, you got to do all the planning. And they went as far as even getting their lighting system, you know, yeah. because. Now, more and more, you want your lighting system to be synced with the songs, which gives a nice, more professional show, right? So totally. it's interesting to see that the, the bar has gone up for a lot of the junior, like, you know, smaller bands, uh, you know, to, to try to match, you know, a show, you know, so like, the even if you're shows. paying. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how, like, uh, the economics have played and how these bands have taken advantage of these things to improve themselves, their shows, and, you know, to, to gain a bigger audience. 100%. You'll see that in the dedication. I mean, hauling gear around. People think even if it's a small club show, they're like, oh, these guys just show up and play. There's so much more than that. But what about the stress levels of, like, you're, you're about to go on tour, to, you know, you're going to open up for a big name, and then, like, they didn't even rent you the right hitch or trailer for your gear, and then you got to on the spot, figure it out. And then you have to live in this van that you're driving in for X amount of hours, right? So they slept in their seats, you know, and it's not comfortable, man. It's not comfortable. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed that interview as much as we did. Real quick, before we wrap up the show, just a quick reminder that we do have the community tab up on Sound Mojo, very much active, including polls that we've been putting up. And we wanted to dive into one of these polls. So what was this poll for today there, Joe? Uh, do you purchase music after listening to it on streaming service? So I'll ask you, do you mm. purchase any music after you've listened to it on a streaming service? So for me personally, it's, it's pretty rare, but I will say I, I like to purchase vinyl still, um, sometimes for just the cover to frame or sometimes to actually play. Um, in terms of streaming, I, I would never buy it on iTunes or anything or buy a CD at this point. What about you? I mean, I'm curious, Joe, actually, what you listen to primarily. Is it streaming or is it like a different form of... of I'd have to say at this point, it's streaming, YouTube, whatever, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the majority of it. I have two, a couple of turntables here every once in a while when I feel that nostalgia vibe or... or I don't actually ever buy anything because now I listen to it, right? Like, it yeah. sucks to say, but like, I mean, like, you know, I'm listening to it, right? But if I go to a show, like... And I'll usually support the bands, especially smaller bands, if they have vinyls, uh, because I love vinyls, so why not, right? So I'll collect those type of things, you know? So I will buy that music, but yeah, mm, sad to say, no, unfortunately, I don't buy it. It's music. so hard to, to create the two grocery stores next to each other. You get the exact same stuff. What incentive is there to tell the person not to get the from the free store? Well, look here, it's like, why would I? Seems pointless. That's exactly what you're echoing. Here, I don't stream or buy. The music industry is dead to me. So that's Makes Eri you wonder Vaughan. why he's on a, on a music channel, but okay. At least we're not dead to him. That's good. Yeah. But we appreciate his honesty because look, I'm just, yes. not that the music industry is dead to me, but I don't, uh, he doesn't stream or buy. So there you what go. What does he do? What does he yeah, do? Yeah. I'm, I'm, he only listens to us, I guess. <laughs> oh, sh- <laughs> I hope not for him. I hope he finds, uh, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, but Donald, uh, not Donald Fagan. This guy, he's, uh, he's been on Sam Mojo for quite a while and he always has some yeah. really cool, uh, comments. So it's like, he closest thing he has to streaming is XM in the car. So, but like, he likes to buy records and stuff. I know like he, nice. he often comments this kind of stuff. So he high fi kind of stuff. So I'm buying, seeking good jams. Uh, and he takes a chance. Like, I, I, you know, I forgot about that aspect of buying music where it's like, 
I used to just go to the store. I, even though I knew one song where somebody had said or three people had said something, I'm like, hmm, let me check this out. I would drop $15.99, whatever the price was, you know, uh, not too crazy, but like I'd buy the album. Generally, it was okay, but sometimes you'd get these where like those were the best songs. The rest is kind of like, bah, not, not for me, you know? Right. But and that, yeah, that, that was the struggle take, too, right? I mean, I, and, and I used to like, I used to like uh, drop a hundred bucks every time I would go, you know, like I'd buy four or five CDs. And then, but then you listen to them longer, you know, I'd listen to them for a good while, but wow. Now you like, you don't even pay that. You pay that for a year for all the music. It's crazy. Right? There's How, never enough time to listen to it, all, which is insane, but you're paying way less. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, it really is incredible, but uh, yeah. it's cool to see what people voted. Yeah, that's it. So this next one here is <laughs> being a guitar player. We all make faces, especially if you're doing. You'll notice a lot of guitar players if they're playing wah wah the pedal, the the mouth will move with the pedal. Stank faced. Oh, and they go wah 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 with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it, you can't. You could try if you think about trying not to do it, you're gonna screw up. But anyways, it just becomes naturally. So yeah, I thought like you know which guitar player has the best face or makes the craziest faces. So I just put five up here, but we asked people to leave more in the comments, you know. So you have like you know uh, Stevie Ray over here. You have Steve Vai. <laughs> Steve Vai. Followed by the one and only Prince. Trademark. Santana. This one was funny, you know. Like it's just like what happened, you know. Like uh, you know, he stepped pants, on a Lego. Did his pants fall? Yeah, exactly. He stepped on a Lego <laughs> or something, you know. Joe. Joe just looks cool every freaking time he makes a face. I love Joe. The Santana. glasses. But I mean, like some of the other ones, I couldn't fit them all into here. But like you know, John Mayer has some of the best expressions I've ever seen. Uh, so it's probably an oversight that I didn't put him here. But uh, interesting comments, you know, like tom deluge from uh the long sorry from uh blink 182 oh there you go yeah this person picked srv number five which i guess is Joe another Saturday. john Mayer. exactly there you go angus young he did have definitely had some faces uh and then here you have like paul gilbert true yeah paul gilbert for I'm me it's me. ace fraley yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> face that's his trademark <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. You know, it's like uh, same thing with drummers. You know, like they all, everybody has their faces or their poses or their stance. You know, it's. Do you have a favorite one? Uh, like a guitar player face. Yeah, or just uh, a music face. Uh, no, not really a favorite one. I just I don't I, being a guitar player. I'm guilty of all of this. <laughs> you know, so to your like, own maybe. I've I'm, done I'm the, mixed yeah, match. probably. I wouldn't want to see my own, but anyway, yeah. So these are. Uh, <laughs> it was funny to see. You know, it was like a little. Uh, little cute you know little uh, idea for uh, fun for, little uh, experiment yeah exactly you know so anyways thank you for everyone for commenting liking and for voting in the last post and the future posts we definitely appreciate it let us know any questions or any topics or even any you know like thing you think we would like to have on the show any guests we're always listening always uh always take your cons your comments into consideration for sure 100%. Make sure to let us know and look out for those polls on the comms tab. And of course, please subscribe on YouTube and our audio platforms for more episodes of not only the podcast, Sound Mojo has independent artists coming up all the time on the page. We have On This Day in Music, tons of different segments that we do regularly. So it's going to be a bunch of awesome, entertaining oh. content that's fresh. Yeah, I forgot to mention uh, the, the new segments we're trying out with uh, the verses, right? With, which we yes. did with under Auburn skies where we want to pin albums against albums, sometimes from the same band. That's why we did this one. It was interesting. Yep. Uh, and even like, it, you know, eventually we're going to do like, you know, slash versus Keith Richards or, you know, whatever. So like any combinations that you guys may think of that we are never definitely won't think of send them our way. We definitely want to do it. And we're going to most likely have uh, guests, either the guests on the show or specific guests to talk about a specific thing uh, or album this is just the tip of the iceberg for sound mojo and inner sleeve and we appreciate you guys make sure to check in with us on social media as well we also have the store up and running which you can find in the description t-shirts crew necks i believe hoodies we have basically everything get ready for that summer weather and we really appreciate you guys checking once again right here on episode 72 of inner sleeve we'll catch you guys next week <laughs>